All right, hey everybody, welcome. My name is Patrick Connor. I will be presenting the Fantastic Four of Energy today. So here are our four heroes that I'll be discussing today. Solar, the power of the sun, uh, the grid, disseminating power far and wide, batteries, storing energy for you when you need it most, and EVs, the linchpin of our energy future. So about me, I've been uh, an EV and solar owner since 2007. I've been with the OEVA for a long time and I ran a few of our big events. I have a EV and energy blog and a podcast. If you wanna talk about any of these more, find me after the presentation. Happy to talk about any of those. This was the first OEVA event that I ran in August of 2007. We, we rented out Portland's living room, AKA Pioneer Courthouse Square for a day. That white truck there in the center, that was my first EV, a 1998 Chevy S10 electric. And then here's another event a few years later that I helped coordinate. This event was at the now dismantled Electric Avenue near Portland State. I've included this one since it's the predecessor to today's event. National Plug-in Day became National Drive Electric Week, and now it's Drive Electric Month. So it's evolved since this uh, first, first event. Okay, enough of that. Here's what we're here to talk about. I want to convince you that our four heroes, while each mighty on their own, together are powerhouse team that can add resilience to your home the grid, while making you more energy independent, cutting emissions, and saving you money. So I'm gonna start by pandering to the crowd. This is an EV event. EVs truly are the star of this superhero team. EVs have a lot of advantages that this crowd knows very well. They're fast, they're smooth, quiet, convenient to charge up while you sleep. However, their real superpower is right there in the name, electric. Gas cars can only be fueled with, well, gas. Gas is prone to supply shocks, price volatility, and let's just say geopolitical issues. Sure, there are biofuel alternatives like ethanol or greasel, but these are not scalable enough to offset any significant amount of petroleum use without their own serious impacts. Without gas or diesel, your gas slash diesel vehicle is just a big paperweight. Electricity, on the other hand, can be generated in many, many ways. <clears throat> it's scalable and we have an existing massive distribution network for electricity. And with off-peak charging, EVs help stabilize the grid and better utilize the infrastructure that we already have in place. EVs will, pun intended, transform our energy future. Hero number two, Solaris. There's a big fusion reactor in the sky called the sun, and it provides light and warmth. If you're a plant, it gives you the energy for photosynthesis. And if you have solar panels on your roof, it can give you the energy you need to run your home. Solar gives you a level of independence from the grid, and this is becoming more important each year as electricity rates only seem to be going up. Our next hero, Volterra. Here in Oregon, the basic electricity plan is generally a flat rate per kilowatt hour. It doesn't matter whether you use that kilowatt hour at 6 a.m. or 6 p.m., you pay about 18 cents for that. But there's another option. You can sign up for time of use or a time of day rate plan. These plans split the day into three parts, off peak, shoulder, and peak. This allows you to pay about half as much per kilowatt hour during off peak times compared to the basic plan. The midday shoulder time is about the same as the basic rate. Then there's peak rate. And this is more than double the basic rate. So if you can reduce or eliminate your peak usage and shift your electricity grid usage to off-peak hours, you can save a significant amount of money. Well, how can you reduce your load during peak times? That takes us to our final hero, the Battery Titan. Home batteries have a lot of really cool features. Paul and I were just talking about them there. <laughs> so when fully charged, you have the flexibility to go off-grid whenever you'd like. Batteries can cover you during a grid outage and they allow your solar panels to keep operating during a grid outage. And I wanna dwell on that last one for a minute because that is something that I didn't know when I first got solar on my house. So home solar inverters are what's called grid following. And that means that the inverter needs a signal from the grid so it can generate an AC waveform 
that's synchronous with the grid. And if the grid goes down, you don't have that signal. And if you don't have batteries, then your solar system simply shuts off. And how frustrating is that? The grid is down. This is when you need electricity the most. You have solar panels on your roof, and let's say the sun is shining, but yet they're turned off. So if you have batteries though, when the grid goes down, your battery system isolates you from the grid, and then the batteries take over providing that signal to your solar, so then your solar can continue to work. And the good thing about that is you don't even have to be discharging the batteries. The solar inverter still sends that signal, or the batteries inverter still sends that signal, and so your solar can continue to operate. So that means not only do you have the battery energy there that you can use, you also have solar supplementing it. So now you can keep going indefinitely if you have enough sunny days and enough to get you through the night in your batteries. So batteries have a couple more tricks up their sleeve too. So we've looked at each of our intrepid heroes individually and hinted at how they can work together. So let's assemble the team. Solar provides the energy from your for your home and your EV and your storage battery. Time of day rate plan allows you to pay less for the electricity that you do use during non-peak times. The battery allows you to time shift your solar energy from whenever the sun happens to be shining to those peak hours, which are typically 5 to 9 p.m. You're not getting a lot of solar at 9 p.m., but if you start it from noon and you can discharge it from your battery, there you go. The battery allows your solar panels to keep operating during a blackout, as we just talked about. This can greatly extend the time that you get to keep your lights on. And then there's net metering. Net metering is a solar and grid team up that allows you to feed your excess energy into the grid and receive a credit for it. So there's another trick up the sleeve that here that this super team has, and that's VPPs. VPP or virtual power plant. That's a battery and utility team up. This happens when the grid expects a period of high demand like a hot day when everyone gets home and turns on their air conditioning. The utility could fire up peaker plants to meet this demand, but that's often the most expensive and the dirtiest electricity on the grid. Another option is for the utility to buy their own grid scale battery. And to some degree they're doing it, but it's very costly. Third option is to call on the batteries of their customers that are already attached to their grid. And that's called the VPP. Realistically, they're doing all three of these to some degree, but let's focus on the last one because that's the only one that we can participate in and it's the title of this slide. So when the utility forecasts a hot day, they tell the VPP participants that they will be dispatching the batteries at a certain time and date. And you can opt out if you'd like or stay involved. And if you do stay involved, you as the battery owner get paid a significantly more than the typical rate you would pay per kilowatt hour. For example, Portland General pays $1.70 per kilowatt hour. That's almost 10 times the 18 cents of the basic rate. So if you could buy something for 18 cents and sell it for $1.70, I'm gonna do that all day. <laughs> uh, so why this premium price? Because they want to encourage people to participate. They want them to sign up for this program and it covers the wear and tear on your battery. You bought those for you, not to supply the grid, but if they're willing to pay you, now maybe it's worth it. And if we're lucky, sometime soon, just to tie EVs back into this, EVs with vehicle to grid might be able to participate in VPPs. Right now, that infrastructure doesn't exist, but uh, it could be coming soon. So stay tuned for our Fantastic Four of Energy as they become the Super Six when they team up with Captain Heat Pump and Dr. Induction Stove in chapter two of this Electrify Everything saga. So that's it, that's the basic presentation. I have a lot of backup slides if you have any specific questions. Uh, any questions? All right, I will, uh, I've got time left, so I will just show you some of the cool stuff that uh, I have with my setup. So our home here is in Beaverton, 12.3 kilowatt PV system, and it's east-west facing. Generally, you'd like your solar to be south facing, that's where you get the, the best uh, generation but uh, east-west is fine. In fact, that just means mine comes on earlier and stays on a little later, uh, although the peak isn't as high. Uh, was there anything else on there? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I have to talk about, uh, I've been driving EVs since 2007. Right now we have uh, uh, three EVs in our household, although one's in Corvallis, so that doesn't really count. And we recently got a four-ton heat pump installed. That's, yeah. For the amount of batteries. Yeah. What is, is there any guidance on for if you, um, 
Will you have enough just to cover a day or two or a week or what? Right. Yeah. So uh, the, the question was how much battery storage is enough? And um, you get a lot of benefits from just one battery, whether um, because of what I talked about, it allows your solar to keep working. So that alone is valuable. The general target is about four hours worth because most outages are, are less than that. Plus that allows you to cover the uh, peak time from five to nine. So four hours is kind of the sweet spot. And then anything above that, um, it still just adds value. Uh, for example, if the grid is down multiple days during the winter when you're not generating a lot of solar, having that power is really gonna help you. Uh, but the costs uh, add up quickly when you start going uh, to 24 hours or 48 hours of, of energy storage. So I talked about time of use plans. So here's the example from PGE's website. It shows uh, the off-peak rate, uh, mid-peak and on-peak. And you also you can see uh, the weekends are all off-peak. So today, uh, as a Saturday, we're uh, at off-peak all day. Then uh, here's an example of the energy use at my house. And you can see the different colors there. Uh, gray is grid usage. The uh, yellow or orange is solar and the green is battery. Now, uh, this particular day was special because it was a VPP event. So normally that yellow line would have kept tapering down and through six, seven, eight o'clock. But instead the battery took over because PGE was dispatching the battery and my solar was all being sent to the grid and whatever uh, battery capacity I wasn't using at that time was being sent to the grid. Here's our solar production for that day. And uh, the colors here show you where the energy is going. So blue is powering my house. Green is charging up the battery. Red is going into our cars and uh, gray is going to the grid. So you can see right there at five o'clock, all the solar started going to the grid helping keep my neighbor's air conditioning running. Uh, yeah, so this is our vehicles charging up. You saw it on the last chart, and here's just the vehicles isolated. And uh, one of the cool things that Tesla has is charge on solar. So you can have two settings for your vehicle. You, you have, like, say, set it at 40%. If it's below this, charge from whatever source. And once you get to that 40%, then just charge on solar to however high you want to set it, 70 80%. And so that's what we do. Uh, that way the batteries aren't ever too low because as soon as I plug in, if, we're, if we come home at 20%, it's going to use the grid and charge up to 40. But then after that, it just waits until there's surplus solar. Uh, solar that's not running our house or not charging up the, the power walls then goes to the cars. And speaking of power walls, here's the power walls. You can see that uh, they were taking a little bit of solar in during the day. And then uh, at 5 o'clock, they came on full blast. Uh, part of it's running our house, most of it's going to the grid. And then uh, you'll see that they, they stopped when it hit 20%. We keep, with this VPP event, you don't have to send all of your battery capacity to the grid. You can tell them, hey, you can only charge it down to 30% or 20%. We have it set to 20% for maximum participation. And then uh, after nine o'clock, when the peak times, when we go to off peak, you can see it charge the battery. That's the uh, line on the far right charging up the uh, power wall. And it didn't charge it to 100%. Um, we charge it to like 70 or 80%. And this is all controlled by their software. You can tweak it. Actually had some automations running for a while until they uh, made some changes that I liked and then I didn't have to run my own automation. So there you go. That is my whole presentation and backup. You have a question? So could you talk a little bit more about the software? Part of it's in the Tesla batteries and stuff. And part of it's at the utility. How does that divide out? Right. Yes. Uh, so for in our area, the VPP events are all run by Portland General. And they had a pilot program called Smart Battery Pilot. Uh, that was uh, runs through the end of this year. They're working on legislation to make that a permanent thing. And it's all their software. So in San Diego and some of other regions, it is a joint effort with Tesla where Tesla has a contract with the utility and Tesla runs it for them. I think in Texas they do it that way also. But uh, here Tesla's not involved other than it's Tesla's power walls at my house. But there are plenty of battery systems that are um, allowed to be, participate in this, not just Tesla's. So it's not run by Tesla at all. Yeah, they actually had some bugs early on in this program. I was one of the first to sign up for it. And... Uh, 
Um, I sent them notes. Here's what you're doing wrong. Here's how you should fix this. There were times where uh, they would lower my battery output because they wanted to just take a certain amount. But I was using it to power my house during peak times. And so I ended up using grid because of it. And they were trying to have less load on the grid, but they actually ended up creating more load on the grid. But that's why you do a pilot program. You figure out those things on the small scale, you work them out, you fix them, and then you roll it out bigger. So that's what they've done. And it was really cool because uh, when I sent them this feedback, they were very interested in, and they were like, how is this working? And uh, uh, it, was, it was cool. So to see them actually take feedback and improve things. Alrighty, thank you everybody. That's my time. Brian will be up next.